audience says to you, like, just a quick, quick test, they say, well, it won't be coming here. But they just say, well, if it's not coming here, where are both of the lines going? <laughs> right? Yes. Um, I, I don't know if this is appropriate now, but, but is the company um, forced to produce something like this environmental impact statements? Yes, they will be doing environmental impact statements, and those occur after the application has gone in, after the need and all of this stuff, all the, after our opportunities. The environmental impact statements, for example, if you put in a tower of this size, obviously the environmental impact is very different from a tower of this size. So now we need to have a discussion about you know the need and what what the you know what the what the need for the system is, and not wait until. Then we can defend the particular environmental concerns that we have. And that's that's very important to understand that. And we do, I should be to be in fair, there are two opportunities during the scoping process here for citizens to provide comments. And indeed, it is very powerful uh, that we understand uh, all towns and, and residents understand the environmental sensitivities of where we live and we start itemizing what those concerns are. Wildlife, and it goes all part of the public. The, the, in Sauk County, that was done on the county level. They have some uh, environmental inventory that they have done. So it's very important. And, and business impacts those communities that have tourism and things like that that rely on, you know, like this is a gateway to your town. It's not particularly good in terms of, you know, uh, when there are other, op other courses. Well, so yes, there will be that, and there will that would happen down here. Well, I, I'm just, would the state be supervising the... The Department of the Public Service Commission has its own department, its own DNR regulatory thing, but they use employees from the DNR to go out and help them cite and study the pre-assess. Is EPA going to be participating at all in the supervisor? Uh, not unless there's some question that comes up that I'm aware of. The EPA is... They would address it many years later, yes. Where are we going to process? Oh, no. Ah, see, we, we had a queen. Our reliability is good. Uh, <laughs> okay, Bill, that, yeah. Yes. We're at the first stage, yes. Okay, um, so I'm sure, listen, how many people here have property that's in, that would be impacted by this? Okay, so let's, you've got one of the national, if not the national expert. I'm, I'm here to fart you. He's here today. Let's hear your questions. What if, it, what if I, what if I, I'll ask the five first one. I live so that my property is uh, about a third of a mile away from the line. Okay, but it is, I'm situated on my property so that if I look out every window in my house, except for the south, I'll be able, I will be able to see it running across the horizon from west all the way to south, to west to northeast. Um, and it will tower above the horizon about 100 feet or so. Would that have an impact on my property? Well, the job of an appraiser is to reflect the actions of a buyer. So to answer that question, you have to ask yourself a different question, and that is the before and the after. In the before condition, you look at the view, as you stated, and I assume that this is an attractive view. And then you have to ask yourself, who would purchase this property? What type of person, and what is their motivation for it? And if the view shed is part of that motivation force, if you damage that view shed, the logical result would be there would be a less desire for that property. Now, that's what logic would tell you. In appraisal, we do have to go a step farther. We can't just appraise properties on logic or our opinions of things. What we have to do is we have to look for evidence. And the first thing the appraiser would like try to do is find evidence of a home like your property in your before condition and then another home like your property in the after condition with that type of view and then compare the values of the two. If there's a difference, that is often communicated as a percentage of loss instead of dollars 
so that can be applied to other homes in like situations. So that's how I would answer that. That is the job of the appraiser, is to do a before and after analysis. And just so you all understand, the appraiser comes into this equation after ATC's appraiser has already visited your property, they've already done the appraisal, and they come back with the appraisal for you. One little warning though, ATC also likes to do, and it's not unique to ATC, I'm not picking on them, but they're the people who you're going to be dealing with. ATC, like other condom norms, like to do something that's called a, um, yeah, I just forgot what that's called. Uh, it, it's like a pre-negotiation offer. I'm trying to remember the actual term of it right now. But what that is, is they'll come up with, they've done a little bit of market analysis, and they'll make you an offer. It's a one or two page deal. And No, it's not jurisdictional. No, that's the last one. Um, but what they do is they try to get you to make an agreement right then and there. And if you do make an agreement right then and there, not all hope is lost, by the way, because there is a process where you can change your mind within uh, actually with the power line, it's going to have to be less than six months, but you can change your mind and you can refuse and go right to the appeal stage. That is possible for you uh, to do. But usually the appraiser comes in, an appraiser like myself is a second opinion appraiser. I'll come in after ATC has already given you the offer and a copy of their appraisal. If we do the appraisal within 60 days, and get it postmarked and back to you in ATC, that appraisal is paid for by ATC. There's no expense to you. And then after they receive that appraisal, they'll check that one to theirs. They'll look for areas of agreement, areas of disagreement, and they'll come back and try to renegotiate, trying to get a voluntary agreement from you at this point. If that doesn't work, they finally will give you the last and final offer, and that's called the jurisdictional offer. And you have 20 days to accept or reject. Negotiations are over at this point. Um, and once you have, if you accept it, then you've accepted the deal. The deal is done. If you reject it, you hold your right to an appeal. You must file an appeal within six months. And you absolutely need an attorney for that. I will tell you as an expert, I will not work for a prop owner without an attorney, in particular against ATC. I will not do that. Uh, absolutely will not do that. Uh, and there's many, many reasons. One is I like my height and I like my skin. And ATC has very, very good, very high priced attorneys. And you need a very experienced attorney to fight for you as well. And that's a general process of what's ahead in valuation. Right. So,